Welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible Study. In this series of Bible studies, we'll be taking a closer look at the Bible's evidence for the completion of the prolonged Judgment Day and the end of the world occurring in the year 2033. And now here's your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. Hello and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible Study that is taking a look at the biblical evidence for the end in the year 2033. This is study number 53. And in our last study, um, I mentioned that we're going to begin looking at Enoch's name uh, in uh, the Hebrew, um, the Strong's number for the name Enoch is 2585. It comes from another very closely related word, which is 2596, and that word is translated as train up and dedicate or dedicated. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, look at these words, and we'll begin by going to Proverbs 22, verse 6, where we read... Um, uh, you know, a, a very well-known uh, Bible verse as far as child-rearing is concerned. It says in uh, Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And the word train up, the two English words, train up, is a translation of the Hebrew word, that elsewhere is translated as dedicate. And again, we'll look at those verses in a little bit. And uh, and, and is uh, closely related to Enoch. If you look in Strong's Concordance, you'll see that the name Enoch comes from this word. So that means that Enoch um, has a name that itself would identify with training up a child in the way he should go. And God does tell us, you know, good things about Enoch as far as the way he went. Remember, if we go to Hebrews 11, um, in verse 5, it says, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. And also, in Genesis 5, where we first read of him, uh, we're told in Genesis 5, verse 24, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. He pleased God, he walked with God to walk in the Bible, um, has the figurative meaning of walking in God's commandments, keeping the law. Of course, that's not how he went up into heaven, because no man is justified by the works of the law. But it, he was able to walk in the commandments of God because the Lord had saved him first, gave him a new heart, with an ongoing desire to do the will of God and a newfound ability to do so. And, 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 you know, that's the nature of a child of God. After God saves us, we want to keep his commandments. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And uh, we're, we're also told regarding love, um, that God first loved us. We love him because he first loved us. And the love of God would be the, um, the bestowment of his salvation, the granting us grace, the having mercy upon us. And, and in the love shown forth by Christ, as Christ kept the Father's commandment to perform the atonement, and he died for us. He, he loved us in that way. We become born again as, as the Lord, uh, through his word, applied that shed blood 
to our souls, and we were made new creatures. And, and again, in our heart, from that point forward, we perfectly keep the law of God. We perfectly keep God's commandments. Well, um, do, doesn't the Bible say, uh, if we say we're without sin, we're a liar? Yes. Yes, it does. And that's why we also acknowledge, even after salvation and after receiving a new born-again soul, we're still in the fleshly body. And sin resides in the flesh, and we're, we're at this time, one whole personality, but, um, you know, this strange mix of carnal body, sinful body, and newborn again soul. Yet we do admit we sin because uh, of the fleshly condition that we're in. But anyway, um, God saved Enoch, gave him this new heart. And from his heart, he walked perfectly within the commandments of God, and it would have uh, been evident in his life as um, the body would have been brought under. The body never becomes perfect. It's not saved in this lifetime. But the body, while Enoch lived those 365 years, or however long after uh, he lived after the Lord had saved him, would have been in submission for the most part, though still sinful. And, and then he, he went up, he went up. So in Proverbs 22, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now, I don't want to get too much into this, but I think we, we should at least touch upon what we have learned um, in, in some other passages. And uh, for instance, if we go over to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, Ecclesiastes 12, God tells us some um, interesting information about the days of youth. In Ecclesiastes 12, starting in verse 1, it says, Remember now, thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them, while the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. Okay, we're, we have to really think about this, what we were just told. We have to consider, first of all, God is mentioning and bringing to remembrance and telling the reader, remember, now your creator in the days of your youth. And right away, we think naturally and we think of our childhood, our teenage years, our 20s, or our earlier days, the days of our youth. No. No, uh, don't do that. This is the Bible. In the Bible, Christ spoke uh, in parables, and without a parable, he did not speak. What could be in view by youth? And, and notice that the Lord, again, admonishes us to remember him, the creator, in the days of our youth. And then he goes on to say, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when, they, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Now, uh, obviously, it's, that's a reference to old age. Old age. Um, and, and old age is identified as evil days. Now, again, if we do um, take a moment to think naturally, of course, we can see why, because in one's youth, there is energy, strength, um, the, the, the body uh, is uh, still um, attractive, and, and, and there, there's so many positive. It's like 
the flower of the grass, when the flower springs up, it, it, it's very beautiful. And, and there's a certain glory to it. But after a few days, the flower fades. And, and it doesn't look quite so attractive. And of course, in old age, aches, pains come, diseases come, failing eyesight, failing hearing, um, hard to walk, let alone run, and, and so forth. It, it gets increasingly more difficult to um, go about in this world with uh, an ever increasingly older body. And, and so these, uh, yeah, if you want to think naturally, you could, you can make that kind of distinction on one level, but if you stay there, then you're, you're not understanding the Bible. Um, days of youth are much easier, much more pleasant, not talking about, you know, mindsets. Some people, when they're young, they're depressed, and, and as they get older, yes, we know there's all those kinds of things, but looking at the physical body itself and, and normal, typical um, uh, life in this world, the, the younger days are, are often the better days for most people, though there are exceptions. But notice also that these evil days, that, and, and it's the days of the youth, um, wherein the evil days come not. See, the, the, that's, um, you know, setting one over against the other, that you should remember your Creator in the time of youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw not. And, and there are a number of years in um, physical old age. Somebody can enter into old age, 60, 65, um, uh, 70, uh, you, you know, and, and live till 75, 80, 85, 90, eat some even to 100. And, and, uh, and when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. And it's often the case when uh, an aged person is going on and getting more sickly and weaker and weaker and um, it's all they can do to get out of bed and, and get up. They're, they're, they're not enjoying life to the degree as they had previously in their youth. But notice what God says next in verse 2, while the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened. See, this is similar to the evil days. The evil days, well, they, they come not in days of youth. They come later. And likewise, the Lord is going further and saying the days of youth are a time when or while the sun or the light or the moon or the stars are not darkened. They're shining. There, there is plentiful light, and 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 then also the the closing statement of verse two: nor the clouds return after the rain. After the rain, meaning the rain has fallen and the rain is over, and then the clouds come, and you see now this the Bible says why you have to watch. You can't think. Um, you know, like, like you're reading any kind of book in the world. No, this is the book of God, and it has a deeper spiritual level. And if you don't find that level and understand that, you don't understand the Bible. So let's go over to Matthew 24. Matthew 24, that tells us in verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Clouds come after the rain. Now, I'll, I'll try to explain that. 
Okay, the well, we, the two verses we just read in Matthew 24, 29, immediately after the tribulation, which is judgment day. Judgment day, the world's judgment comes after the tribulation, which fell upon the church. And it so happens that in that great tribulation, and, you know, the Lord has revealed quite a lot of information. Quite a lot had been sealed up till the time of the end, and now that we've reached the time of the end, he opened the scriptures to reveal much time information and much judgment information, and he has given his people, the elect, those truly saved and therefore wise because they possess the Spirit of Christ, and Christ is the essence of wisdom. He has given the wise, a wise man's heart, our new born again soul, new spirit, a wise man's heart discerneth time and judgment. Time and judgment, and God has revealed the biblical calendar of history, the timeline that we have been able to lay out, um, and, and we know the church age ended on May 21, 1988. We know the Great Tribulation commenced at that point. And then on May 21, 2011, the 23 year exact, full 23 years to the very day, the 23 year Great Tribulation concluded. And Matthew 24, 29, immediately after the tribulation, that statement took effect. And, and what happened is the sun darkened, the moon did not give its light, and the stars fell. And you're probably going, well, you're really crazy because here we are on the earth years after that point, and uh, the sun shine today, in case you're not aware of it, and uh, the moon still gives light at night, and, and the stars are still up there in the sky. So you are way off. You're way off. And, and again, what have you done? What have you done? You've thought naturally. You've thought carnally. And, and God has confounded you, to tell you the truth. God has, um, uh, I hope not, but perhaps darken your understanding. Because Jesus said in Matthew 13, speaking to the disciples who were wondering why he always spoke in parables, he said, uh, in answering, verse 11, he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. It is given to you, children of God, children of God, those chosen before the foundation of the world, it's given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Well, they asked about parables, and Jesus responded with the word mysteries because they're synonymous. It's given to the elect only, only, to know, to understand, a wise man's heart discerneth time and judgment. The elect know or come to understand the mysteries of the Bible. The mysteries are the hidden things, and that's the definition of a parable, basically. That which serves to hide truth. But to them, that's the rest. That's everybody else in the world. Uh, and, and they are the overwhelming vast majority of people, an overwhelming vast majority of professed Christians. They fill the churches, they fill the pews in the churches. And to them, it is not given, they are not given ears to hear, nor eyes to see. And, and so, God tells them, Immediately after the tribulation, the sun is dark and the moon does not give its light and the stars fall. And they think literally, and their church, of course, um, confirms that and, and has taught them that. 
You must take the Bible in the plain, literal, historical, grammatical method of interpretation. I almost fall asleep. No, I'm just mocking. I, I, it, it, they, they have a natural-minded methodology for coming to truth in a spiritual book. You can see the problem, I hope. And, and when you look up sun in the Bible, S-U-N, the Lord God is a sun and a shield, Psalm 84, verse 11. Christ is identified as the sun because the sun that God created gives light to the world. And what does Jesus do spiritually? Gives light to the world of his elect. The light of the word of God shines upon men or did shine up until May 21, 2011, when God completed his salvation program and ended it, and then he put out the gospel lights. The sun represents Christ, Christ uh, who, who would bring the light to save. The moon represents the law of God because the moon uh, reflects the light of the sun, just like the Bible reflects the light of Christ. And the stars represent the elect, the light message or bearers that we, we carry the message of Christ, the message of the Word of God, the Bible. And immediately after the tribulation, God successfully, perfectly, successfully completed the salvation of all that he intended to save, of everyone whose name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. They all became saved, and therefore he no longer needed the light of the gospel to shine forth into the hearts of um, uh, sinners in, in, in the darkness of their soul in order to translate them from the kingdom of darkness of this world into the glorious light of the kingdom of God, of the kingdom of God's dear Son. All accomplished. Mission accomplished. It work complete. And so, put out the lights. Put out the lights. You, you'll find this kind of language in several places in the Bible. You'll find it in Isaiah. You'll find it in Joel. You'll find it in uh, Revelation. And, and, and it's teaching that God has saved everyone that he obligated himself to save because Christ paid for their sins from the foundation of the world. And that shed blood of the Lord was applied through the word. Faith came by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, cease evangelization. Cease evangelization. And this is what uh, Ecclesiastes is referring to by the reference to the evil days, the evil days that do not come in, in the days of youth, and remember your creator, in the days of your youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Remember, God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. And, and the evil days, as well as the implication, is that the sun, the, the light, the moon, the stars, shines in the days of youth. That, that's a day of salvation. And the implication is the evil days are when the sun goes dark and ceases to shine and the light goes out and so forth. It's judgment day. Judgment Day is the evil day, and that's why in the Lord's Prayer there was the built-in petition um, that uh, in, in Matthew 6 that, that said, um, deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. Oh God, in the day of salvation, have mercy and deliver me, deliver my family from evil, from the evil days that the Bible warned about that are coming. Well, um, I, I'm I'm sorry to say, on one hand, I, I am sorry to tell you, if you're unaware, the evil days have come. And that's what you're noticing happening in the world today, the evil days, the days in which God takes no pleasure because it's the time of the dead 
that they would be judged. It's the time where he must pour out his wrath, and, and he takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked, nor do his elect people that are left upon the earth to go through the prolonged judgment day period. And, and here is an indicator where it says, uh, again in verse 1 of Ecclesiastes 12, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw not. The evil days are tied to a period of years. From May 21, 2011, we're looking at a, a prolonged judgment day period with, with much biblical evidence pointing to the year 2033. 22 actual years, 23 inclusive years. This would sum up or be what's in view by the evil days. It is the years when the sun is darkened and the moon does not give its light and the stars fall. It is the time wherein God is no longer saving souls. He's completed his salvation. Of course, there's um, you know, wonderful hope in, in that sense that he saved a great multitude. The Lord saved more at the conclusion of um, the, the, his sal uh, of the conclusion of the day of salvation, which uh, was the second part of the Great Tribulation from 1994, September 1994 through May 21, 2011. That's when um, uh, the Holy Spirit was poured out a second time, and God was recovering the remnant of his people, gathering together um, a few still out of the whole of the world's population of the nations outside the churches, but, you know, few of, of billions still adds up to scores of millions of people that the Lord saved, and, and that was um, with the, the latter rain. And the latter rain ended because, you know, there's uh, the seasons of rain. The early rain was the church age. The latter rain was that, again, little season after the church age in which the great multitude became saved. And that's the last rain to bring in the last fruit, this great multitude. And notice the statement uh, in verse 2, while the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened or the clouds return after the rain. And that's why in Matthew 24, we're told, uh, verse 29, the sun, moon, and stars, dark, and the stars fall. And the next verse, Jesus coming in the clouds. He's coming in the clouds. And the, the uh, spiritual meaning or definition of clouds uh, in the Bible, and, and you know, I'm not make, making these things up out of my own mind when uh, I say this represents this or is a type or a figure, comes from the Bible. Read Numbers chapter 9, the Israelites follow the cloud, and, and you'll see repeated reference in Numbers chapter 9, where, where God identifies them following the cloud in the wilderness to his commandments. See, that's how God helps us to define his own terms. The Bible's its own dictionary. Like, like for instance, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, that rock was Christ. There's a definition. When you, when you find the word rock, you have to think, is it Christ? Is it Christ? Or the field in the parable of Matthew 13, the field is the world. Okay, now over Proverbs or wherever, in the Old Testament, you read about a field. Think, it, does the world fit here? Could the world be in view? Well, well anyway, the rain fell over the course of the Great Tribulation. Now it's after the Tribulation, immediately after the Tribulation, the rain cease, and the clouds come. Christ comes in judgment, uh, upon the inhabitants of the earth. Well, we'll um, we'll we'll end our study here, and Lord willing, when we get together in our next Bible study, we'll we'll pick this up, pick this up. Looking at Enoch, remember we started with him. His name means train up. We went to Proverbs twenty-two six, 
and uh, we'll, we'll see how this fits together. Thank you for joining us for eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. For more studies and information, visit our website at www.ebiblefellowship.org. Until our next Bible study, may the Lord's perfect will be done.